بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله الذي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرض أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف We offer our condolences to Imam Mahdi أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف and to all believers all who know Imam Ali alayhi salam and adhere to the values that Imam Ali alayhi salam stood for. Tonight, inshallah, I will share some points about Amir al-Mu'minin alayhi salam that we can also learn from and inshallah this would be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as sign of our love and devotion and inshallah would help us in these nights of Qadr inshallah as a kind of tawassul Amirul Mu'minin alayhi salam had some very good followers and helpers for sure their number was much less than all people who even attended his camp or his army or in, they lived in Kufa but there were some people who were really devoted in Muharram when we talked about helpers we talked about helpers of Amirul Mu'mineen and their different degrees uh, two of these people that we want to mention and see how they understood Amirul Mu'mineen are two brothers two sons of Sohan Zayd ibn Sohan and Sa'sa'at ibn Sohan both Zayd and Sa'sa'a were great supporters of Amir al-Mu'mini alayhi salam Zayd was martyred in the battle of Safin and Sa'sa'a took part in Jamal, in Nahrawan, in Safin and he witnessed martyrdom of Amir al muminin and it is said he died in the year 70 in Bahrain where he was sent as exile in the time of Uthman also Uthman had sent him as exile into Sham with Malik Ashtar Sa'sa was also very eloquent and he used his eloquence to support Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam Zayd ibn Sohan when was uh, near his death said uh, something that is very interesting and then you would see some similarity to what uh, Amir al muminin said to his brother Sa'sa Imam Sadiq alayhi salam said when Zayd ibn Sohan, uh, sorry, I said Safin, and the, in the Battle of Jamal, uh, fell down in the day of Jamal, 
جا امیر المؤمنین حتی جلس این در اصه امیر المؤمنین sat next to his head فقال رحمك الله يا زيد قد كنت خفيف المعونة عظيم المعونة May Allah's mercy be upon you زيد You were very light when it comes to demanding you were not a burden you were not demanding too much and you were great in helping actually this is what was one of the characteristics of the prophet that he was kathirul ma'una khafiful ma'una so it's a great recognition great certificate that imam gave to zayd ibn sohan and i hope inshallah we can be the same for our imam inshallah so zayd who was uh, close to his martyrdom when he saw imam or noticed imam's presence and heard what imam said farafa zaydun ra'sahu ilai he raised his head towards imam and he said wa anta fajazakallahu khayran ya amir al-mu'minin he said and you may Allah reward you good reward O commander of the believers فَبَاللَّهِ مَا عَلِمْتُكَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ عَلِيمَ this man of understanding man of ma'rifa of Allah and Imam he says, by Allah, I didn't know you except as someone who knows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَفِي أُمِّ الْكِتَابِ عَلِيًّا حَكِيمًا And you are in Ummul الْكِتَابِ عَلِيًّا حَكِيمًا You know, Quran says, وَإِنَّهُ فِي أُمِّ الْكِتَابِ لَدَيْنَا لَعَلِيٌّ حَكِيمٌ Quran is in Dawah Mahfuz and is high and is Hakim. So Zayd says, You as Hujj of Allah have high position in Dawah Mahfuz. Allah is in your chest is great. Means you understand greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَاللَّهِ مَا قَاتَلْتُ مَعَكَ عَلَى جِهَالَهِ By Allah, I didn't fight in your group, under your leadership, with ignorance. Because, for example, there is a battle, you know, I took one side, you know, I said, I like this side. You know, some people took that side. No, everything is based on ma'rifah. وَلَكِنِّي سَمِعْتُ أُمْ سَلَمَ I heard Lady Umm Salama, wife of the Prophet, saying that she heard the Prophet saying مَنْ كُنْتُ مَوْلَى فَعَلِيٌّ مَوْلَى اللَّهُمَّ وَالِمًا وَالَى وَعَادِمًا عَادَى وَانْصُرْ مَنْ نَصَرَى وَخُضُلْ مَنْ خَدَلَى فَكَرِحْتُ وَاللَّهِ أَنْ أَخْضُلَكَ فَيَخْضُلَنِيَ اللَّهِ When I heard this, then I didn't want to be among those people that Rasulullah said, وَخْضُلْ مَنْ خَدَلَهِ I didn't want to leave you without support so that Allah would leave me to myself. This is reported by Al-Kashi in his Rajal, 
and also Sheikh Sadduq in his Ikhtisas. So you see the Ma'rifa of Zayd ibn Sohan. And then his brother, Sa'sa. He has also very important sayings about Amir al Mu'mineen. And it is said that Imam Sadiq alayhi salam said Sa'sa'a is one of those people who knew Amir al Mu'mineen Haqqa Ma'rifatih. It's very important. We should know Imam of our time. He knew Imam of his time properly. So there are three things about Sa'sa uh, that are very well known that he said about Amir al Mu'mineen. We want to reflect now to increase, inshallah, our ma'rafa, our love for Amir al Mu'mineen. One is that when Amir al Mu'mineen was forced to become Khalifa, people pressurized him to the extent that Amir al Mu'mineen says, Hatta wut al Hasanal. So much pressure. So in the day that Amir al Mu'mineen became Khalifa, Sa'a Sa'a made this sentence. He said, Zayyant al Khilafah wa ma zanatka. You beautified Khilafah. You added to the value and beauty of Khilafah. And not that Khilafah made you better or added to your beauty or beautified you. Some people don't have that much value. Personally, they are just like any other person. But when they get a position, and because of that position, then they get some power, some respect, etc. As long as they have that position. And after that, then people don't pay attention to them. Amir al Mu'minin is not like that. He says, not only you don't gain from Khilafah, but you give to Khilafah more value. Warafa'ataha wa ma rafa'atka. You raised Khilafah, the level of Khilafah. But Khilafah didn't raise you. Wahiya ilayka ahwaju minka ilayha. Khilafah needs you more than you need Khilafah. It's very beautiful understanding of this man about Khilafah, which is, was the first political position in the Muslim world. The second thing that we mention from him is about the day of 20th of Ramadan in the last months of Ramadan of life of Amir al-Mu'minin alayhi salam. In the afternoon of the day 20th, he went to see if he can meet Amir al Mu'min. But it was not possible because it is said that children of Amir al Mu'minin, sons, daughters were there, so he couldn't go on inside. Then he said to someone who was able to go inside, Please say my message to Amir al Mu'minin. And tell him, Rahimakallah, Ya Abba al Hassan. Lakad kaan Allahu fi sadrika azima. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was in your chest azim. Something very similar to what his brother. 
had said just before his martyrdom. وَلَقَدْ كُنْتَ بِذَاتِ اللَّهِ عَلِيمًا You knew the essence of God. So when this person took the message of Sa'a Sa'a to Amir al-Mu'mineen, Amir al-Mu'mineen said, tell him, وَأَنْتَ يَرْحَمُكَ اللَّهِ فَلَقَدْ كُنْتَ خَفِيفَ الْمَعُونَةِ كَثِيرَ الْمَعُونَةِ Then Imam said to him something similar to what he said to his brother, that you were very light in, as a burden, as a, you know, someone demanding. You, you didn't expect that much, you didn't demand that much. You were very easy to deal with. But when it comes to helping, you helped a lot. So this is also the second thing that Sa'asa Sa said about Amirul Mu'mineen. فَلَقَدْ كَانَ اللَّهُ فِي صَدْرَكَ عَظِيمًا وَلَقَدْ كُنْتَ بِذَاتِ اللَّهِ عَلِيمًا The third thing is when Amir al Mu'mineen passed away. I am quoting this one from Bihar al Anwar, volume 42, page 295. So when they put Amir al Mu'mineen's body in the grave, وقف سعسعة بن صوحان على القبر He stood up over the grave of Amir al-Mu'mineen ووضع إحدى يديه على فعاده He put one hand on his heart وَالْأُخْرَى قَدْ أَخَذَ بِهَا التُرَابِ وَيَضْرَبُ بِهِ رَأْسَ And with the other hand, he took some soil from the grave and was putting on his head or, you know, head, hitting his head with this turab. ثُمَّ قَالَ بِأَبِي أَنْتَ وَأُمِّي يَا أَمِيرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ May my father and mother be your ransom, O Amir al-Mu'mineen. Then he said, حَنِيًا لَكَ يَا أَبَا الْحَسَنِ He said, this martyrdom is something that is a great achievement and may this be blessed for you. فَلَقَدْ طَابَ مَوْلِدُكَ Your birth was pure. From pure parents, pure rizq, even pure place of birth, in Kaaba. Vakaviya sabruka and your patience was strong. Vaavuma jihaduka your jihad for the sake of Allah was great. Vazafarta biraika your opinion was very good and victorious could succeed with your opinion. وَرَبِحَتْ تِجَارَتُكَ Your trade with Allah was making profit. It was a successful business. وَقَدِمْتَ عَلَى خَالِقِكَ And now you have arrived next to your Creator. فَتَلَقَّاكَ اللَّهُ بِبِشَارَتِهِ 
وحفت كملائكته واستقررت في جبار المصطفى either as a statement or as a dua he says Allah received you or may Allah receive you with his bashara and the angels surrounded you and you have settled next to the Prophet Allah has honored you with this neighboring and you have got close to the rank of your brother Prophet in the sense that not they are equal in the sense that you are able to be with him you have been able to drink from the cup of the Prophet very beautiful then he says please ask Allah to have favor upon us by being able to follow you and act upon your seerah, your conduct. To be able to have velaya of your awliya. In Ziyarat Ashura, the social velaya we said, this awliya are not imams awliya are followers and we should have velaya of imams and velaya of their followers wal mu'adat la'adaik allah please ask allah to help us to be separating ourselves from your enemies wa an yahshurana fi zumrat awliya'ik allah resurrect us in the group of your awliya faqad nilta ma lam yanalhu ahad wa adrakta ma lam yudrakhu ahad you have reached what no one has reached ja hatta fi sabil rabbik bayna yaday akhik al mustafa haqq jihad before the prophet in front of the prophet you did great jihad in every difficult battle you were with the prophet and helped and supported you did qiyam for religion of allah you established sunan right practices received from the prophet and removed fitan wastaqam al islam then islam was established became strong sometimes it reached the point that islam was very close to being defeated forever in some of the battles things were so critical that just in one day everything could finish but you offered your life you sacrificed your life and Islam became strong with you back of mu'mineen was strong means you supported you your presence gave support to true mu'mineen sorry and the flags of the path the ways became clear no one has your merits altogether and he continues very beautiful and in that difficult time when he is so sad you know everyone is sad but Allah helped him to 
be able to express his aqidah. These are things that he had it, but to be able to express it so eloquently, it's a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he said again, Fahani an laka ya amir al mu'mineen. Kunta aqrab an nas min rasulullah qurban. You were nearest person to the Prophet. Wa avvalhum islaman. You were the first person to embrace Islam. Wa aktharhum ilman, aktharhum ilman wa fahman. You had more knowledge and more understanding than any other person. Fahani an laka ya abul Hasan. Again, he says Fahani an laka. Congratulates Amir al Mu'mini. Laqad sharraf Allahu maqamak. Wa kunta aqrab al nas ila Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi nasaban. He already said, You are the nearest person to the Prophet. Again, he said, You are the nearest person in nasab, in relation. Wa avvaluhum islaman. Again, he emphasizes on this because it was very important. Wa awfahum yaqeenan. Your certainty was more than others. Wa ashadduhum qalban. Your heart was strong. Shedda is different from qilza. Shedda means strong. Wa abdalahim linafsihi mujahida. Wa a'wamihim fil khayrin nasiba. You were very much happy to do jihad and give from yourself and you had greatest portion of khair fala haraman allah ajrak may allah not deprive us from reward for your sake means means our reward for believing in you and for mourning for you wala azallana ba'dak may allah not humiliate us and let us be humiliated after you فَوَاللَّهِ لَقَدْ كَانَتْ حَيَاتُكَ مَفَاتِحَ لِلْخَيْرِ وَمَغَالِقَ لِلْشَّرِ By Allah, your life was keys of goodness and locks for badness. When you were alive, you were opening for us treasures of goodness and badness was locked up wa inna yawmaka hadha miftahu kull sharr wa mighlaq kull but now that we miss you this day is the key or keys for any bad thing and is the lock for any good thing is now the situation completely opposite your life was key for goodness but now missing you and not having you is the key for all the badness and then he says something very important this is the end of his statement here he says walau anna nas if people had accepted from you and listened to you, then Allah's blessing would have so much come that they were able to eat from above and from under their feet. But unfortunately, they prefer dunya over akhirah. Thumma baka buka and shadida. And after that, he cried a lot. Wa kullaman kana ma'ahu. Then all the members of Ahlul Bayt and all the followers of Aminul Mu'mineen who were there cried a lot with Sa'sat ibn Subhan. There are other things also about Sa'sa and Amir al muminin Maybe I not mentioned one of them in the night of 21st about the last visit that he had with Amir al muminin So you see, uh, 
people like Zayd ibn Subhan, like Sa'sat ibn Subhan, despite being close to that time, because now, alhamdulillah, after 400, 1400 uh, years, we are in a position that many things are discussed, our ulama have developed aqaid, collected re references. So our chance to know imams today is very high. But they were living at that time. They were very close to the time of prophet and imam. And things were uh, still being developed, discussed, registered, reflected upon. But for them, because they had the right direction, it was enough to hear, for example, Zayd ibn Sohan says, you know, I heard this Hadith Qadir. Of course, you must have heard other things, but for them, they didn't need to read you know, volumes of books. They knew who was supposed to succeed the Prophet. They knew merits of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam. And they reached this level of ma'rifah of Imam that maybe even we, with you know, lots of information that we have, we may not have more if we don't have less. And when it comes to devotion, certainly they were very high. They were happy to give their life. They were happy to undertake risks. He was someone who was challenging Uthman. He was challenging Muawiyah. So I thought it's good to listen to their descriptions of Amir al-Mu'mini alayhi salam in this important night. One of the things that we find about Amir al-Mu'mini, and this is my last point, is Imam Ali's interest, not just as a duty. He had great interest in whispering to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Abu Darda says that I saw Ali in a place that was for palm trees, date trees, for Bani Najjar in the darkness of night. I found him, he is praying, he's crying. And he was talking to Allah. Ilahi ufakkiru fi affik fatahunu alayya khati'ati. This is also what we should say to Allah in this night. O oh Allah, I think about your pardon, your forgiveness. And then when I think about your af, how great is your forgiveness? My khatiyah, my mistakes, my sins look very little. I'm not that much then worried about them. But thumma adhkuru al-azima min akhidhik fata'adhumu alayya baliyati. But then when I think about your questioning, your judgment, your punishment for criminals, then my calamity becomes great. So Ahlul Bayt themselves, and also they taught us to be the same, they were able to balance between hope and fear they had great understanding of mercy of Allah, forgiveness of Allah, but this was not making them careless about their role. Not taking sins easy, not taking uh, risks about their actions, to be very, very careful as if there is no way to be forgiven. When it comes to sinning, you should think 
maybe there is no toga available for you but on the other hand even if it has happened that you have committed great sins you should be certain that if you repent Makhfara is there sorry if you can kindly unmute We unmuted, we muted you by mistake. Okay. You're saying when it comes to Toba. Yes. Yeah. So when it comes to sinning, they were not taking any chance, any risk, and underestimating Allah's judgment, Allah's punishment. But on the other hand, when they were thinking about Allah's pardon they knew that it's so great that any sinful person who is honest and wants to fix the problems can always be sure about Allah's readiness to forgive and to embrace with his rahmah we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this night that might be one of them, might be the night of Qadr. So it's uh, likely to be night of Qadr. Or at least is the beginning of the process that would be completed in the next two nights of Qadr. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to include us among true followers of Muhammad and all of Muhammad and to be able to understand and then acquire those virtues and merits that they exhibited we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us forgive our sins remove any blockage any darkness any burden caused by sins by forgetfulness by heedlessness so that in this night of Qadr and coming nights, inshallah, we would be in the best condition and the best form which is possible for each of us. May Allah, inshallah, accept your du'as and accept your a'mal and grant you what he gives to his true servants in this night. Amin, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Wa Ali Muhammad